All right, cool. Hi, guys. Everybody hear us okay? Hear, at least me? I know everybody can hear me okay. Uh, so, uh, personal intros, I guess. So that's us, as you can see, uh, how we normally look. Oh, good. That's all messed up. Why is that so messed up? This is working great up until right now, and that's how it works, right? Well, that's um, cool. Whatever. Anyway, you fixed it. Yeah. So, um, months and months ago, uh, besides Nashville, it hit me up, and they were, and they said, "Hey, Burbsec is really popular." And Burbsec is this meetup up in the Chicagoland area. It's a big group of meetups, and uh, a lot more meetups are springing up all over the country. And we would like you to come down and talk about how to get a successful meetup rolling, because clearly you might know a thing or two about that. Uh, and I was like. Let's do one better. Um, I didn't want to just come down here and go, hey, Burbsec is the best thing ever, and our framework is the greatest way to success and the only way, and that's that. And anyone who disagrees with me, I will fight you. Um, I said, why don't I get a bunch of... <laughs> Thanks. So why don't I get a bunch of other people with different experiences who also have successful meetups, uh, and we can sit down here and you can watch us fight about who's right and then make your own decisions. Uh, and so what we've got going on here is, uh, I'm Johnny Christmas, it's Chris Carlos on the end, and we are uh, higher ups in the burb sec paradigm. <laughs> we, we take care of a lot of stuff that burb sec needs taken care of. Um, and Bur Chris actually has a lot of seniority on me by probably about a year. Um, I, I get credited as founding burb sec a lot, which is patently untrue. Uh, I was somewhat late to the game. Uh, I just do a lot of stuff for them. Chris is... It's, it's all fake seniority. It doesn't, you know, there's right, no actual structure. It's just kind of like... You have an name card and stuff. Right. It's, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> yeah. I'm just he's, ridiculously prepared for stuff. He's got that, like, false modesty. It's like this, yeah. I'm not really in charge of anything. As he, like, brushes the dust off the placard yeah. that <laughs> covers the vice president. Like, yeah. But don't don't worry. This is just... We're all worry. just normal people here. I'm just more normal than most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and... and uh, that's one of the best parts, I think, that makes Burbsec work is there's not really any leadership. Nobody's in charge. It's just a bunch of people who get things taken care of. And we'll talk about that later. Um, I brought in Kate, who uh, does a lot for my sec, but won't admit it. Uh, they're up in Michigan. They've got a couple of meetups uh, around the state. And they're fairly successful as well. And they do things a lot differently than Burbsec does. And so I wanted to bring her in so she could be like, that's dumb. You should do it this way. And... Yeah, and so that'll be cool to hear from her. And then uh, Fletcher is from Wisconsin, and he's taking care of getting Millsec and Madsec rolling in Milwaukee and Madison, or just Millsec, I guess, but working with Madsec to make things happen. Uh, and they're just starting out and having a, a bumpy ride at it, but going well. Uh, and so I figured like he'd have a lot of growing pain stories to share and things that have worked and things that aren't working and what they're trying. So we've got like the full gamut here, like two different two very different meetups that are working excellently and then like the growing one that's getting started to kind of help you guys out. And uh, that is us. Um, so what we're going to do here is kind of just talk about like, I'm going to walk through the Burbsec framework and go, here's what Burbsec does. And then everybody will tell each other that they're wrong and then we can all laugh and, <laughs> and then we'll move on from there. Um, Burbsec is made up of, right now it's four... Three? It's four. four. It's four. <laughs> four meetups around the Chicago land area. Um, Prime, Northwest, and East. Uh, Prime was the first one, and that one is second biggest now. It's, it's consistently the <laughs> largest. Consistently the largest. Um, a, a, average night in Burbsec Prime, we get 30, 30 plus people. Yeah. Uh, this was like taken on January 7th, and this was just like who happened to show up that day. It's working really well. We get a lot of not only consistent members, uh, but also I can't remember the last time I came to one and we didn't have at least one new member. Uh, when one is low, uh, I'd say two to three, like, hey, just heard about this and we're coming in. Um, the most recent uh, meetup we started is Burbsec East, which is not in the Burbs at all. It's in the city. Uh, and this was a picture from the very first day, and right out of the gate, we had we were hitting double digits, super easy, um, and uh, and that's not accidental. Uh, we we plan a lot of this stuff out in advance. There's a lot of work that goes in ahead of time, and once you've got everything rolling uh, and working consistently, 
it takes care of itself and you pretty much don't have to do much of any work anymore. But up front, you really need to be dedicated to making this work. And that's the important part because starting a meetup is like one of the most demotivating things you can do uh, because it'll be you and, and then one, some dude in sweatpants who doesn't even work at InfoSec. <laughs> And you'll never want to come back, but you got to stick it out. Um, so let's let's start off with with the core of what makes Burbsec work as an infosec meetup, and kind of how it's different from a lot of other people's infosec meetups. Our, one of our big things is we don't do dues. Um, we don't ask anyone for money ever, and we work around that. We don't either, though. There you go. I'm just saying that's a thing we can all agree on. Yeah, yeah and I, I think like. I understand that you know you might have to like be renting a space somewhere and you need money for that and maybe that's a bad choice of space. Um, don't ask people for money. People aren't aren't interested in in spending money at all ever. It just doesn't work. Um, ISSA likes to likes to charge for membership fees. Who's anybody remember ISSA here? Yeah, uh, I speak once to twice a year at ISSA meetings in Chicago and. Um, they ask me a lot, like, how do we get the bird set crowd in here? We want the hackers to come in. We don't have any engineers. It's all VPs and CISOs. And, like, we want, we want the boots on the ground people in here. And I tell the very first thing I tell them every single time is stop asking for money. That's, that's a huge turnoff. Like, why, why am I going to spend money to go here and hang out with a bunch of suits uh, when I can go hang out with a bunch of people like me for free at the bar? Yeah, it's something that, that you know, if you're paying money, you expect some kind of return for whatever you put in and with these kind of meetings what you're expecting is social interaction you know getting a better feel for this community meeting new people and i don't want to pay to meet new people i don't want to pay to meet johnny right like it's um. it's it's hard enough to <laughs> sorry I, I, I was now they shut that business down um the it, it's hard enough to get motivated to leave your house and go talk to a bunch of strangers and and hope that something good comes of it, let alone having to pay for that, that's ridiculous. Nobody's going to go for that, so just don't do that. Uh, another thing we do is, is we don't require you to show up with ODAs or exploits or hacks that you created. Um, a lot of 2600 groups and other like serious hardcore hacker groups do that. Like you, you got to show, show up with an ODAY or you can't be a member. We don't do that. It's alienating. We want people who maybe aren't even in doing this but are interested in it and want to learn or are looking to get into it. That's who we want to show up and share our knowledge with. Uh, I don't think... Any of you guys are doing that, right? You don't have any required exploits. Um, we don't do presentations at BurbSec. Uh, I don't like the idea that those presentations uh, interrupt the flow of conversation that's going on, stopping the mingling to have to watch something that maybe you don't care about, making the room be quiet because somebody is talking. Um, we just generally, that it's and it's too formal, it's too structured. Like BurbSec, we really try to be like, show up, have a beer, or don't talk to some people or don't and then go home and that's that's pretty much all it is uh and and so we're when you're doing like presentations and things like that you're almost like forcing this this structure and this this sterility on people that i think is again alienating um however my sec has come up with a good structure for working presentations into the night without interrupting things and making it work Maybe you could throw you two bits on that. Well, I'm going to say that I'm going to represent the uh, Jackson MySec piece. It actually started in Southfield multiple years ago, and I'm mostly just involved with the Jackson version. And we actually meet twice a month, and one of those meets in that month is presentations, and then afterwards we all go to the bar. But, but otherwise, the other you know second time we meet in the month is just social night. We bring our laptops out, we pick box, and just do all of that at the bar. And it's always in the same spot, too, so we don't, like, everyone knows where to go to find us, and we're always there at the same time. Yeah, that's critical. Um, that's absolutely critical for your meetups. Same time and place every time so that they can set a recurring thing in their calendar, and even if it comes up in six months and they go, man, I haven't been there in a while, I should go back, that they can show up. It's the same time, it's the same place, unless something major has happened. Um, so you do two a month, and then twice a month. Twice a month. The first one is presentations. Second one is hang out at the bar, pick locks, and drink. But we really hang out at the bar every single time. I would. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. And um, what are you guys doing up there? Um, it's very similar. No dues. Um, it's a relaxed social <clears throat> type of scenario, typically at a bar. We are 
we were experimenting with a new venue, but we do one downtown Milwaukee and then we do a suburban one alternates every other. And that's in the past been very successful for us, depending on where people uh, work and live. Are you doing presentations? Are you doing just hanging out? What's your um, general Generally, thing? it's been just helping out. We are toying around with not necessarily presentations, but more of like a quick kind of round table, five minute, just talk about something maybe something you're working on oh yeah the round table project thing. explain or, explain how that goes because that was a good idea yeah it was um i believe based off of the austin hackers anonymous framework to a degree but it's just it's very quick it's it, we we're planning on doing it optional so if you're new maybe you're shy you know i feel it would work as a good icebreaker perhaps if you are new or you know you, you can discover common interests very quickly yeah so the deal was you just you go around and everybody takes five minutes and says here's something cool I did at work you know this week or this month depending on how often the meetup is or here's something cool I was reading about online or something I was just thinking of starting to look into just like one interesting thing that you did or were looking into that month to kind of get everyone talking lube everybody up a little bit get the conversation flowing um, I make think I actually disagree with something like that though because I feel like that's super alienating I know you don't want to like if people have an option or not they might still still feel the pressure of needing to speak and I think that might be a little overbearing for a lot of new people I'm just that's sure my, there is that like if you when you're doing the go around you always have that anxiety of oh man it's coming to me it's coming to me it's coming to me I'm pass. gonna say something <laughs> dumb about drones pass <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean that's freak out, flip the table, right? And so, and I think a big takeaway from all of this is going to be the the worst answer I could give you is oh, do whatever works for you. And yeah. so you're going to see that like it's it's working well for them, might not work too well in other situations. It depends who's showing up and what they're really interested in and what they like. Uh, and so just we don't... also have an alternative for something like that. We every once in a while do something we call lightning talks. So people who might have something they want to say that's five to ten minutes long. They'll take turns and go through all of those on one day instead of taking like a presentation and then do the other stuff. So it's just like one day, probably every few months, that anybody has like five minute talks, we do lightning talks for. It seems yeah. to work out for us. And you guys have like a more formal room for that too. Yes. Yeah, we'll, and we'll talk about rooms in a bit. Um, aside from presentations, uh, we don't we don't allow sales pitches. We, we I mean, salespeople are welcome to show up. You can hand a business card out. You can throw down a sentence about what you do at your company, but like we really want this to be a place where you can come unload after work. You don't want, like if if people have to deal with these salespeople and these vendors on the phone all day at work, they're not going to want to come to your meetup afterwards. That's half filled with salespeople who are going because like oh it's it's my target audience. Um, we really had to put a kibosh on that and say no, don't don't come in here leaning into our people. It's not for that. It's for so they can hang out with each other. And I understand some salespeople and some vendors are 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 one of us for sure. A lot of us are sales engineers who work both sides of the fence. And yeah, you definitely want to go to the infosec meetups. Uh, it's we're just trying to keep it, you know, super non work related, non industry. Just hang out. Have a drink, chat. I don't want to have to deal with the salesperson talking my ear off about something I don't, I don't give a crap about. So we got a real kibosh on that. But we do allow sponsors, and specifically just refreshment sponsors. If you as a company want to come and pick up everybody's tab or buy some advertisers, and in exchange we'll say, hey, company X, thanks so much for buying the refreshments. What's your name and a sign? We'll tweet it out. We'll give you that advertisement. You're welcome to show up and, like I said, hand your business card out, throw a sentence down about what you do. And if somebody, you know, asks you for more information, for sure, have that conversation. If, if you as the salesperson are being solicited for more info, go for it. But, but don't be leaning on our people. Don't be throwing sales pitches that people don't want to hear. Um, every now and then we'll get a, we'll get a sponsor who wants to just give like a five minute presentation. Like, can I just do five minutes? Just a five minute sales pitch. And <laughs> Out in the parking lot, you can. Yeah, right. It's anywhere. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> but yeah, not, not in here. It's a hard and fast rule. And I, I feel that works really well. It makes people want to come back because you're still maintaining that relaxed, safe atmosphere. It's a, it's a, uh, sales person safe room where you know you're not going to get a pitch thrown at you and that works really well um, but we do allow sponsors and we'll, we'll throw the name around and that's fine as long as they understand and agree to the terms there um, going right into where your meetup should be um, oh let's talk about sponsors what do you guys do you guys do sponsors then they come up? 
Okay. It's a great way to get drinks without, you know, paying money. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it sure is. Like, I mean, who likes free free beer? Anybody? Show of hands. Okay. Nearly everybody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, but it, but it's, a, it's a fine line you walk when you're welcoming sponsors in. They have a little expectations and you need to make sure that they understand and agree to everything ahead of time so that nobody can get mad later. Now, do sponsors reach out to you? Or do you guys reach out to sponsors for these things? Because I feel like it sounds like a lot of legwork that I would be willing to put into that. Um, it's, it goes both ways, but, but very little legwork. Uh, because we don't need sponsors. They're not necessary for the event to occur. And that's important. Like you, the, make sure that your event does not require a single dollar to exist. Uh, and so because we don't need sponsors, if we know somebody, if we see somebody sponsoring something else that we're at, Sometimes Chris or, I or, Chris or I or one of the other BurbSec members will hit them up and go, hey, do you guys want to sponsor a BurbSec? We meet here and there. You can say yes or no, and I don't care either way. And that's fine. We're not pushing for sponsors because we don't need the money. Um, but a lot of time lately, we've been getting hit up um, via Twitter and meetup.com going, hey, I work for this company, and we do whatever in your area. I'd like to sponsor a night. And that came from, I think, just BurbSec becoming popular to the point where com vendors now are aware of it and so they hit us up. And so once you reach that level of popularity, they'll just start trickling in. And again, whether or not you want to even entertain the idea of sponsors is totally your call and you feel it out and make sure you're able to handle it if you can. But we're definitely not, we're not. Yeah, I'm not like beating down people's doors and like, hey, you know, we got, give us some money. We got to get people drunk. No, it's. Yeah, we're not working the call book. We're, <laughs> we're not on Salesforce, like just going down the numbers, we have, calling uh, the salespeople back. Although I do. <laughs> I do do that, like when a vendor or a recruiter calls me and they're yeah. local, I'll hit them up to come sponsor. Yeah, if you call me up offering me a job, I'm going to try to sell you on coming out to my meetup. And I'll say, like, come and check it out. And then if it's something cool, maybe sponsor it. And, you know, it's it's if you're looking for people to recruit and I got a, a, an event going on that's full of people who work in the industry you're trying to recruit from, you know, if you're serious about your job as a recruiter, maybe it'll show up. If you're phoning it in, I'm never going to hear from you again. Yeah. <laughs> Either way. Recruiters are the same as salespeople, though. you got to watch out, and you got to make sure that they understand they can't come in and be pushy. Yeah. Because, again, no one's going to come to your meetup and you go, oh, man, I hate that meetup. It's just full of recruiters trying to give me jobs I don't want. Um, but, yeah, when recruiters call me on the phone, I go, have I got something for you? <laughs> what are you doing Thursday? Come check this out. I promise there's going to be 30 plus people there who all work in InfoSec or want to. Sounds super creepy when you say it like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I got something for you. Well, have you ever recruiter. talked to a recruiter? They're kind of creepy. You got to play their game. <laughs> hey, man, what are you doing? <laughs> I feel like the having recruiters and stuff for us would be awesome because we have a lot of students that show up to our meetups. So, like, yeah. for them, it's like I'm about to graduate. I got to go figure out what my job's going to be. And they'd much rather have a plethora of jobs to choose from than to, you know, have a lack of them. Yeah, you know? there you go. Um, so next time a recruiter hits you up, you like, that, hey, no, that's a great idea. Thanks. Yeah, I got, you got to do the phone fingers. <laughs> I got something for you. <laughs> what are you doing Thursday? <laughs> or a banana. Um, yeah, uh, and so moving on from there, the location is probably the biggest thing I think everyone has problems with and why a lot of meetups don't work out. Um, you got to have it, A, in an area that has a high population density in the first place. Um, they're statistically, if you have more humans, you're going to have more humans who work in InfoSec or IT or, and, or want to. And that's, they, like, know your target demographic and know where they're at. Um, your meetup's not going to just be InfoSec workers uh, or even just people who want to work in InfoSec. Um, quickly, the whole concept of information security and a separate team for that um, is disappearing. Uh, if you saw Mr. Mann's talk, was it last year? We talked about the complete lack of a need for pen testing. Um, Thanks for that. Buddy. Yeah, Thank that was. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the pen yeah. testers on this. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, it's, it, every job in IT is quickly becoming security. Um, uh, those of you like who work on a dedicated security team know that a lot of your remediation is just telling your Windows team, your, your Unix team, hey, go fix these things that are a problem in your environment, and they are the ones who are doing the fixing. Uh, it, and they're learning security day by day, and it's quickly just becoming a part of the job. InfoSec is everyone's job, not just some little security team who's constantly frantic. Uh, so I'm, I'm betting in 10 years that that's going to go away, and it's just going to be back to IT as usual. 
but that's me. Um, it would be so, really nice if that happened and everybody thought about security. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. So um, you're looking for like a, a high IT professional density in the, in the, per, in the first place because uh, a lot of people show up are just going to be generally interested in security because it's a part of their job as an IT professional. Uh, so don't just look for InfoSec people, look for the IT people. Um, and a good thing I learned a long time ago for figuring out where the IT people live is look where the tech stores get put up. Um, I don't even know what a tech store is anymore. I think like Fry's and Micro Center, but there's so few of those. Yeah. Like what are the, like CompUSA is gone. Yeah. Like where do you guys go for like emergency tech gear when you need to, Best. Amazon, Best, Best Buy. Buy. Next, next day shipping. Yeah, I guess that's like a totally invalid option now. Like, yeah, no, that's more of an instruction. Like, look for tech stores and like, tell me where they're at. Yeah. We're desperate. <laughs> Maybe open a tech store is the answer to all this. Uh, so that used to be a way. I'd be like, oh, because those corporations do tons of research to figure out where to build one. Um, look for where the CompUSAs used to be, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying just, to yeah. return a printer. Just looking lost. <laughs> just typing like keyboards in the parking lot, not connected to anything. Um, and, it, and so make sure your meetup is central to where those people are. Not just like what's convenient for you. Don't host it at the bar across the street from you or a block down because you get to stumble home at night. Uh, you might live in an area where nobody else hangs out, where there aren't any other IT pros, which A is why your meetup's not working because nobody else lives there uh, and B it's not conducive to like nobody's going to want to travel 45 minutes to go to your meetup after work uh, or if you're doing it on a weekend I find that weekends don't work yeah. too well nobody wants to give up a weekend night or day to family stuff yeah. to, to do a meetup Having, <laughs> um, but yeah so we find work nights weeknights work well uh, and especially if it's like right after work because you can leave work and you go to the meetup if if they go home first that's it they're not when you go home after work, you're not leaving the house again. So the, the burb sec, you I know, mean, there's there's four different burb sec gatherings in Chicago land. It's a theme park. Um, each one is is located somewhere where there's it's fun. <laughs> there, there's you know there's tech industry. There's corp there's corporations. They have headquarters or at least offices. There's a fair amount of people doing work in that direct area. But there's also a certain amount of residential. Um, I mean, the Schaumburg area outside of Chicago where Burbsec Prime takes place. There's, you know, Motorola's there, Zurich is there, Nielsen's there. A lot of corporations right there. Um, and people will come over right after work. Yeah. And, you know, at 6 o'clock, you know, 5.30, people start showing up. 3.30 for Johnny. Uh, <laughs> we have Cigar Sec. It starts around noon. <laughs> yeah. So people start showing up right after work, and it's something they do. But there's also the, the people who maybe work down in the city, and they and come You're at East at, like, 3.30, texting me where you at, so... <laughs> It's fine, yeah. but some one people day, will Kate. will you know one day. go home out to the suburbs and and you know have dinner with the family and they're like oh it's seven thirty now I'm still gonna head over to Burbsack it's still going on um, and it's yeah I guess Prime does get a few like that yeah, yeah. for and sure it's, you know west down in in Warrenville there's Naperville area there's tech there there's right people. and it's also people who work in the downtown Chicago area that then commute way out to the suburbs where they live. Uh, they come to the suburban meetups as well, and they'll get off the train, head to the meetup, and then go home. Or, yeah, there are a few people who will go home, have dinner with the family, and then have it pre-established, like, that's my burp suck night, so I'm going to get to get out for a while. Uh, and so, like, it doesn't have to be in the middle of a corporate center. You don't have to do it where all the corporations are. You have to do it where all the IT people are. And those tend to intermingle, but not necessarily. And that's, that's the trick. Go to where the people are. That's a Seems like an easy, dumb thing to say, but there it is. Magically figure out where everyone is and do it right there. Yeah, just do that. Open a tech, Open a tech store. <laughs> or just, yeah, or just set up like a fake one. <laughs> and then be like, fooled you, it's a meetup. Like a hunting blind for meetups. Huh? A hunting blind for meetups. I set up like a <laughs> Tiger Direct store and <laughs> yeah, just, fear at them. Say shibboleth and get in the back. Door. Yeah, you're just <laughs> up on the, the old CompUSA billboard with your trank gun. <laughs> People start wandering up like, is that a, is that a comp billboard? <laughs> Snick! <laughs> yeah, you just drag them to <laughs> Yeah, so just do that. Just shoot people from a billboard. Who's taking notes? Um, 
Thoughts on that? Anybody else? We don't really care about location. Yeah. <laughs> why, and why is that? Like, why was that never a thing? Well, uh, well, I'm going to say this specifically for the Jackson side. Uh, we basically made it as convenient as possible for just being in our own building. We actually meet in our work building. So I go from my office and just go downstairs. And, Cheaters. Yeah. And it's, it's the laziest thing we could ever think of doing. It's, it's terrible to everybody who doesn't work there because we have to sign them in and get them all. Oh. It's, it's miserable. You. No, we can't. And there's not even beer. Yeah, I told you there's a very, they're very different from us. Afterwards, afterwards go to the bar, and I think that's you know, I've tried to convince them to move it to some place that's more, I don't know, like on campus or something like that, but it hasn't happened yet, and I'm not sure it's going to. But that's kind of like out of my hands. So do you get mostly people who work for your company, and it's just really your company's meetup? Well, sure, sure. Okay. But there are still a lot of other. I mean, it depends on who's talking. <laughs> okay. In the social event, it's going to be mostly non. In the social event's not in your office, though. No, no, that's at a bar. Okay. A bar. Yeah. So you do like the presentation ones in your office, and then yep. the social meetup is definitely still not in the office. And it's so totally just because of how lazy we are. Like I think if we had thought through. And thing, you just lucked out. But if it's you're, like if you're doing it in your office, you're obviously probably in a tech center of the city. At least in our city, yeah. Yeah. So. We're, we're spoiled Still. for choice up in Chicago. The, the traffic of getting around all the different places makes it practical to have four different verb sex um, going on every month. Um, right. And it's, yeah. it's really easy for us coming from Chicago to be like, oh, you just uh, do whatever and it's yeah. fine. There's a trillion people wherever you go. Yeah. You may and have that's like why one I wanted to, choice in your town. And then, right. Like, and that's why I wanted to bring other people there. to be like, what, what did you guys do? Because it's the not the easiest as, option. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right, think, so you shut up. I think our meetup is kind of in a in between point where it, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, it's a it's a big enough metro area where you have a lot of the issues such as parking um, that the bigger cities have, but it's not quite obviously as quite as big as Chicago, where you know you're going to have a lot more options or need four different ones. Um, yeah, parking's an issue yeah, again. I mean, like with, if people got to spend money, they're not going to come. So make yeah, sure there's enough free parking. Less convenient. Yeah, huh? people will shy away from. Um, the, the venue, we, we, we're still kind of struggling with that. We did try one venue. There's a, <clears throat> an arena nearby, and they have a lot of events, and the parking on certain nights will shoot up to $20. Yeah. Oh. Just to park there for a few hours, and of course, I, I wouldn't pay that. I, Where am I supposed to find $20? Like so, I, don't, yeah, I don't even know what $20 probably, is. Dues would probably be cheaper. Than that. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're going to move it back to, like you, like you were saying, population centers, one <clears throat> downtown for people that either work or live in the city or you know some people commute into the city and then or vice versa and then we will be moving it back to a uh, venue we've had success in in the past and there's a lot of it's it's a, there's a lot of suburban office centers where there's a heavy tech presence and also a lot of people don't live in the city have no desire to go into the city um sure tra- that's a huge tra- point traffic too. does get bad don't bad automatically don't automatically choose downtown in your the city you're closest to because a lot of people don't want to go or there. If you do, you know, at least make sure parking's not an issue. There's not, <clears throat> you know, like I said, events that are going to make it extremely inconvenient because yeah. people will shy away. And especially if they made, I mean, I know if I made the trip down, I'm going to go check out this group and, oh, my God, there's no one in the park. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't find anyone there. I probably wouldn't go back. Chris, yeah. Chris comes out to Burbsec East, which is decidedly in the city. It's very deep into the city. He comes out at like noon sometimes to dodge traffic and find parking. Yeah. And then he'll just work from the bar all day. Um, it's rough, I gotta yeah. tell you. But then I'm for the dedicated. Yeah. And for the suburban ones, I'll do the same. I'll commute out at like eleven, eat lunch in the Burbs and just be there at you're working at the cigar lounge or a Starbucks all day until Burb sex starts. But that's we're more dedicated and we have jobs that will let we us. We have jobs that allow that sort of thing to happen. Like I can work from a bar all day, yeah. uh, as long as this. We're not recording, right? This is <laughs> okay. Yeah, you may have different results telling your boss, yeah. "I'm going to go to the bar at noon and stay there until 10 p.m." I'll be working. Yeah, but generally, like the at, at both of those meetups, the people, especially in, in Burbank East in the city, like it's mainly people who live in the city, uh, and not just who live in the city, but have access to that exact mass transit line that dumps you off right in front of where the meetup is, and that was ex- explicitly chosen. You walk across the street from the mass transit line in Chicago, nearest to Burbank East, and you're there. If you had to get off, if you had to take a train and then walk three blocks, people won't do it. 
winter time, especially in the winter. Like, nope, I'll see you dudes in June, maybe if I remember you exist. Like, it's got to be. You have to. Everybody's lazy. You have to play off of everybody's laziness. Like, what is, like, if if you could just roll, like, log roll your way to the meetup. Like, how could we facilitate that <laughs> for free? Uh, and that's that's what I did. It's like right on that blue line. You get out, and like, there's the bar, and you're done. You don't have to do anything. Uh, and oh, it's all the way in the back of the bar. Yeah, you have to walk through your hands. <laughs> and still, it's like anybody who doesn't live or, or work off of that mass transit line, they still don't come. Usually, it's it's rare we get anyone who's has to you know drive or take a couple of trains. So you, they're they're only going to do what's easiest for them, uh, unless you're Chris and then you drive out at noon. Uh, um, touching on an earlier point, um, as far as what night of the week to have it, Thursday typically worked out well for us, but I did want to point out. Um, in Madison, Wisconsin, which is about an hour and a half away from Milwaukee, they usually have theirs on a Friday night. Now, if you have, if it's an area where people might be driving 45 minutes, or myself, when I go out there, um, you know, it's, it's about an hour and a half, depending on traffic. Sometimes I'll do the same thing. I'll just leave work early mm -hmm. and go hang out out there. But Friday night, if it was on a Thursday night, I pretty much would never be able to go to one. But the very fact that they have them on Friday nights, people kind of come from all over other cities, or if they're in town, we usually... <clears throat> It's it's hmm. a typical meetup. It's at a bar, but then we usually go out for food, and you know you have the luxury of making it a bit later of a night. Yeah, because um, you don't have to. Most of us don't have to work the next day, and that works out really well for them. I don't know if it would work out for ours. Probably definitely not for Burbsec. But I just wanted yeah. to point that out. Like yeah. a weekend night for them works out very well. The last one I was at, there's probably I would say 25 people. That, nice. That's people. great. Like 25 is great, and I, I think that's another thing is people. A lot of people think 25 is not. A great meetup because you're used to coming to these cons where there's 250 people just hanging out on a Saturday here. Uh, 25 is excellent. That is, if you get the solid 25 consistent, you're good. You are successful. Um, you like those 25 people. Well, you don't have to go. Like once 25 people start rolling in consistently, you can stay home forever and you're <laughs> you're done. Uh, and that's that's um, that's a good point to talk about. Like we were, we were discussing, how do you define success as far as a meetup goes? Um, Kate brought that up, and we were all just like, "Uh." <laughs> and because yeah, she thought we were just implying numbers, like what when you hit 100, then you're successful. And it's like, no, because Burbsec North has eight to 12 consistent people, and they are a solid group. They are it's the same people all the time. And they are dedicated, and they come every month, and they love it, and they love hanging out with each other. They got like t-shirts made. Yeah, t-shirts. Yeah, solid. like they're a solid group, and that's it. So it's not about numbers. It's about t <laughs> it's about t-shirt sales. Kind of like making a call. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, uh, it's about rivalry <laughs> with other burb sex. Like if we, you know, we have the annual fight club. Um, but that's that's an advanced yeah. topic. We'll get to that. That'll be next year. Um, but yeah, the the day that that I mean. When we were first, you know, spinning Burbsec up and figuring out like what, when we were going to do it, um, you know, we went with Thursday because a lot of bars and restaurants, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is when they're making their money. Um, and so you can say like, hey, uh, so we want to have our event at your location on Friday night. Um, we, we might roll in with like five people. It might be 50. We can't really be sure. Can mm -hmm. you accommodate us? And they're like, eh. but if you roll in on, you say like, hey, I'm going to, you know, possibly bring a whole bunch of people in on one of your off nights and everyone's going to be hanging out for a while and people are going to order food and they're going to order drinks and they say, oh, we're going to, we're going to make some money. At one of our, at one of our first locations where we really started doing it um, for a number of days, they were, you know, they gave us, they said, here's a bunch of like, you know, hundred dollars worth of free appetizers every time we came in yeah. and, you know, there's pizza and hot wings and stuff like that. And just because, yeah, we're bringing people in, you know, 30 people consistently every month on, you know, this Thursday when, you know, that's money that, that was traffic they, they weren't otherwise going to see. So um, and we, we you know, thought about the weekend and then said, all right, we're going to do it on Thursday because you still come out and you're not going to be you know, in this incredibly crowded bar that you know, wants to get people in and out as quickly as possible. We're going to sit here and hang out all night. Yeah. And it's, it's deep into the week. Like it's deep into the week where you're kind of pretty much done with work. Like you're, <laughs> <laughs> no, rarely are you going into work Friday like, man, I'm gonna, I got a lot to do tomorrow. Like you're, you're never excited that Friday's coming. You're excited that Friday's almost over because it's coming. But so Thursday seems to be like the night a lot of people are, are able to justify in their own heads. Like, yeah, I'm going to get out. It's been a rough week or I'm going to take it easy tomorrow. So yeah, Thursday's a good 
nights that like work isn't bearing down on you. Like Mondays, you're just you're just depressed because it's Monday. Tuesdays when you like just Tuesdays are when we meet. (laughs) 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 Patch Tuesdays are our presentation days, so I think it's easy to follow that one, right? Yeah, I I, yeah, guess if you're doing presentations, like to to me, like Patch Tuesday, like that's when you're the most downtrodden from work and don't feel like doing crap. You're like, no, I am going home because it's midnight. (laughs) Everything is terrible, (laughs) and it's everybody's fault. And I don't want to talk to anybody. Picking, like, pick so BurbSec Prime is on, on the first Thursday of every month, like clockwork. And I, I had a small hand in saying, like, this is the day that we should do this, which was a bad move on my part because I also like to attend the Chicago 2600 meeting, and I'm sure everyone here is aware. It's the first Friday of every month. And so then I had to go and explain to my wife how, like, yeah, from now until, like, forever, uh, I'm going to like leave on Thursday night, and, you, and you're going to be by yourself, and, and I'm going to go off and hang out with these people you don't know or care about. And, but then on Friday, I'm going to do the same thing <laughs> with different people. And uh, yeah, that was that was not a, a smart. Yeah, but you've got the kid part. to keep you company, oh, so yeah. you guys will yeah, be cool. Yeah. And I'll just be yeah. over there. You stay till, here and parent all yeah. by yourself for two nights right. a week, two nights a month every. Yeah, and when does 2600 start? It's like 10 p.m., right? It starts whenever I show up. Oh, yeah, yeah. It goes yeah. until 2 a.m. or something. I think we the just... lesson there is to just not have a family. <laughs> yeah, so notes, put that in your notes. If you do have a family, Try not to have take, yeah, look into a Central American country that doesn't extradite. Um, yeah, Chris just got back. <laughs> they found him. Came back just for this. No. For this, yeah. <laughs> We had a Snowden them in here. <laughs> um, yeah, clockwork. Has, uh, oh, I didn't raise that. So I won't. <laughs> um, it, and we're talking about like the actual locations we have it. I know you guys don't do it in a bar. Do you do it in a bar? Where are you doing it? Yeah, we, oh, we so do we it in a bar. All right. I don't know that they do it in a bar. Beer and food is a requirement. Um, some people have suggested that we hmm. take it into like a library or. Uh, a library? Certain, certain businesses. Let's that, bring 30 people who want yeah, to talk into a library. A li- I believe that Wisconsin idea. libraries have beer and food, though. So. <laughs> Does the library serve beer? No. Okay. Yeah, all right. Um, well, I mean, if so, I would like to know about it. Yeah, do they have a BYOB policy in the library? I don't know. I have not seen a library in 20 years. There could be a lot of different things going on in them now. Yeah, I understand they 3D print things. That's all I know about libraries. We've had also people suggest their the, the company I work for hosts a number of uh, meetups for mainly for development um, so we're mostly a development shop but um that that's another we want kind of want to keep it neutral not only with from salespeople or aggressive recruiters but as well as a company even sponsoring the venue we want to keep it just <clears throat> kind of a public thing you, you you come you hang out it's a casual meetup yeah and and so as far as if you're doing it in a venue where you want to provide libations uh food um you have to, your selections have to be great. Um, hackers love beer. Hackers love craft beer. We are craft beer nerds. Shout out to Binary Brew Works. Um, we're bringing some excellent beer tonight. Thank you guys for that. Uh, we love craft beer. We love bourbon. We love craft bourbon. Like, we don't shut up about it. And so if you can find a place that has a great selection of both of those, you'll make people happy. If you have a place that's like got, you know, your three domestic beers, it's going to be a bad time for everybody. <laughs> this guy's shaking his head. Like, bar, but we make sure that we have outlets available for people. That's the, We chose the bar that you can set your laptop up and actually plug in if it dies while you're working on something. And that's like that's one of the reasons why it's our location for our social life, just so that we can have laptops. Sure. And see, I like the idea of, I like when people... Exactly. St- I see. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I like when people's stuff dies. And then they're just like, well... Now I have to talk to somebody. Like you I'm, can work together on stuff, though. You don't have to just like head down in it. Unless you yeah. want to, right? There's, I think at, at Prime we used to get a lot of laptops and you'd get a lot of head down people until maybe eight and then they'd wrap it up. And it yeah. was, like, I don't know. And, and again, whatever works for your people. Whatever your people like, enable that and make it comfortable for them. And if they all want to bring laptops and work on stuff and eat outlets, make sure that there's a place that has outlets. Absolutely. I'd say if people are like working on something and they're excited to share it with other people, they don't want to do it in a presentation thing. You kind of get to go to a bar, show everybody stuff on your laptop, talk about it while you're sitting there. I feel like sure. it's not it's not like everybody's got that. a laptop out. It's just someone's excited to talk about something and that's, you know, the avenue they want to take. Yeah. Yeah, and we've done that for sure and it's it's great. 
um, you got to make sure it's quiet enough for those things to go on. Uh, you know how bars get, especially as the night goes on, they keep increasing the volume of the music, just the terrible, terrible music. Uh, that so by 10 p.m., 9 p.m., you just you're just screaming at somebody about how bad your day at work is, or having some mundane conversation, and you realize the next day you're hoarse because you said nothing for two hours as loud as you could. <laughs> the key there is to find out where the remote is and then turn it down. Or to bring a remote. Or, or, or that. One of those things. <laughs> to have your room full of five to 30 hackers be able to deal with the situation. Um, but, but a lot of them just, you know, it's a, it's a board in the back. Um, and you can only sneak back there so many times before they lock it up. <laughs> and, and before then they weld the cage closed because you kept unlocking it. Um, and we actually had to change a venue for Prime, which is something terrible to do. Like that is traumatizing for your attendance if you switch venues because you don't really have uh, like a primary means of contacting it. You don't have like a phone list and you, no one's going to call everyone and go, just let you know we switched the venue. Um, you're going to lose some people when you change. And we just had a venue that got so bad uh, that used to be great. They used to love us. The, the staff was amazing. The staff was totally cool with uh, handling um, the fact that we can come in and be like, we might have five, we might have 40. That's the best answer I can give you. Are you cool with that? And usually we pick bars a lot because bars are used to that. Bars deal with randos showing up in and out and needing separate checks. Separate checks is critical. You can't, man, don't do group checks because that one, whoever's last is getting screwed. Um, or you're spending 40 minutes just figuring out who got what. The group checks are the worst. So your place has to be cool with randos punching in and out all night, cool with tiny to huge groups randomly, and separate checks. And we never had too much trouble finding that. Um, but on occasion you do. They're like, no, we do one one check per table. And Sorry, we'll take our 40 people somewhere else. Um, and But the staff was great, fast, efficient, took care of everybody, loved us, loved that we came because we brought a bunch of, bunch of people and the staff is making great tip money. Um, but then, like, they just started changing. And they had a management change. They had a management change. You know, they started doing that thing where they're cranking the music up and they were short staffing us on Thursdays because they're like, rid of you. Oh, maybe. It, it felt like it. And it besides us, already. there was like nobody there. It's like, why? And then it worked. It's like, yeah, if, if you want to get rid of, uh, get rid of a meetup. Yeah. We just, weren't like just passive aggressive, like, oh, I was angry and loud in here. No, we were telling them, like, can you please turn the music down? We just want to talk. Yeah. And, you know, the staff would be like, oh, yes. And not noticeably any quieter. And then next month, the same thing. And, all right, eventually, like, you know, the clueless boyfriend, we got the hint. And, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> got the cold shoulder. Like, she ain't calling me back ever. Yeah. Mm, not good. Every time I call her, I get the outgoing message that's Def Leppard at full volume. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You know what? I'm done. And, and that's, that's another key point. Work, work with the venue. Don't be some parasite that the venue has to deal with once a month or twice a month or whatever you do. Um, work together. You're helping this venue out by bringing a lot of people in. They're going to help you out by making sure that those people like coming so they keep coming. And it's, it's very symbiotic and you, and you have to do that. And if the venue is just not willing to work with you, um, sometimes you got to move uh, and it sucks. But then sometimes you find an even better place, which is really cool. We, yeah, we're yeah. now in an arcade. Uh, That's super. Yeah. yeah, we're in an arcade um, that has uh, it's owned by Namco, and it's a pilot restaurant where they have arcade, bowling alleys, um, really, really good food, uh, decent beer uh, and liquor selection. And the management there, the management I mean, every every month there was communication like how was how was the wait seven? We had a problem with the particular server that we had was just disappeared for forty minutes or something like that. Management wants to know, and at this point we we get the same. I think we get the same wait staff yeah, pretty we do. much we, um, yeah. every time. And so we, and yeah, they know who we are. They know what to expect. Um, and everything really works out well. But you know, it's that, that, and that's where like, the work of, of Burbsec is coming in. Like Someone has to talk to management. Someone has to like call this restaurant. And, right. And, and that's, yeah. that's where your leadership comes into play. And, and, and you should limit your leadership and your hierarchy to that. Like I'm a very big fan of anarchy. Um, n nobody's in charge. Uh, just some people need to be points of contact for outside sources. Uh, so the, the sponsors need someone to communicate with. 
the uh, the general manager of the restaurant needs someone to check in with and talk to, and and someone on staff for your meetup needs to be able to call out to them and go, hey, just a heads up, we're expecting a larger than normal group. Uh, and that person can be anybody. It doesn't have to be you as the founder. In fact, it shouldn't just be you as the founder because you're going to get overwhelmed real quick. Um, it's, it's usually just the regulars. That's how I got involved. I was just a regular. I was there every time and they started kicking stuff to me going when Fubar and Chris couldn't show up. They would go, just as Johnny's always there. Just have Johnny do it. And I said, yeah, okay, I could do that. I could tell a sponsor where to go at what time because I know. And that's all it is. Like there's not a lot of work to it. Once you, once you have a consistent membership, uh, showing up every month, whether or not you're there, you're done. You're totally done. You don't need to do anything other than just keep the advertising rolling and just the notifications. But there's, there's not a lot of work involved. Once you've got everything solid and in place, um, you just show up. Like I've, I, I founded Burbsec East and I've probably, I've missed almost all of them this year and there's been zero issues. Um, I just had to designate somebody else because the guy I normally asked to do stuff couldn't be there either. So I had to find a third guy. And what did I do? Just some, the third guy who was always there all the time. And I called him. He's like, hey, can you just, there's a sponsor tonight. Can you just tell him the deal? And because he's there all the time, he knows the deal. And you go, okay. Um, and it's, it's that easy. Like, don't, don't do hierarchies. Don't do manager. Don't do VP of customer service. Uh, Director. Director, I'm sorry. That's a made up title, by the way. We actually yeah. do something, we call it ad hocracy, but it's like if you're excited and you want to go do something and have fun with whatever the topic is that you're working on, you just take it and run it with it, right? So it's not up to like a hierarchy right. to decide what the next thing is going to be. And I know like uh, we're starting up a workshop <coughs> thing. We're actually going to have like a forensics workshop where people can go do that instead. And that's just somebody else's idea that they, you know, want to run with and no one's going to stop them and just kind of. Yeah, and I said there's a word for that. It's called anarchy. It is, but they but call it adhocracy. Call it adhocracy. It sounds techy. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't coin the term. Make words up and feel important. That's fine. I'm gonna claim a copyright on that. Yeah, it's mine now. It. You're here. It's on film. Official. Great. <laughs> um, uh, tell us about like because we're talking about like hosting in a bar and like the type of venue you need for that. And you guys, you're doing a bar. How, how's things working out for you? Where are you guys at? What's what's the ups and downs you've been seeing? What are the problems you've been having? Yeah, um, we decided to try to change the venue in December, and it's been mixed. Um, the what venue, made you decide that? We decided we wanted a, a bigger... We decided last fall just to try something different. Um, we wanted something with bigger tables so we could bring just gadgets or whatever people were excited and want to show. Or, you know, sometimes we, we bring in locks for lock picking. Um, but things we're noticing, as I mentioned earlier, that the parking situation, um, the menu, it's, it's good as a novelty, but after you've been there three or four times, you're kind of like, eh, I don't want any of this. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. having, having a good menu, especially when people are coming from after work, you know, you, you, you might be, you know, very often I skip lunch, so I'm yeah. starving when I get there. And there I go there substantial to meal. get dinner and they want um, an actual dinner. I want a few beers as well yeah. <laughs> because, you know, due to stress. Because so. we're employed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we're, I, we're currently looking to have it at a bar, and we're, we're looking to our previous venues because they do have separate areas. So um, as Johnny was saying, we're going to work with the man management, talk to them, and just see if hey, you know, we're going to bring anywhere from you know, yeah, five five to thirty people consistently once a month. Would we be able to use this room? Here's let them know what we're about. So, but yeah, mm -hmm. we, we definitely want to keep it at a bar um, just for the, the beer and food aspect. But we kind of want to add. Maybe where it could be more of bring th bring projects you're working in or working on in talk about it with other people. And a, lot, a lot of times, if you're collaborating with other members, that's that's a great place to do it. You know, you're both going to be there. Yeah, you know, schedules sure. will line up. And so, yeah. yeah, I do that a lot. So, that, I collaborate with a lot of people. They go, "Hey, are you going to Prime? We'll talk about it at Prime. You're going to be at Burbsec next week. Let's just do it then." It's actually a, a great meetup place for working on stuff outside of work, like side projects. So you going to Prime? Yeah. All right. Cool. Just deal with it at Prime. So really to trick people to coming out to your thing. For yeah, the first right. Time. Oh, you should go to Prime. Oh, come on and talk to me at this thing I got going on. And all of a sudden they're hooked. Works out well. Um, I want to talk about just advertising real quick because I really want to do some Q&A and address specific things that I think you guys are concerned with. Um, so uh, pretty cut and dry there. Uh, Twitter. Twitter is just, that's, that's 
the best success we've had as far as burb set goes, at least like um, whenever new people come in, I always make sure to ask them, how'd you hear about us? And do that. To be, survey your members. Figure out what's working. You need to talk to everybody. How'd you hear about us? Uh, and almost always they say Twitter. Um, what about you guys? Would, yeah, we do mostly Twitter. We do have an email list because people do find our site. And there's really not much to our site other than we meet here. You can sign up for the list if you want. Mm -hmm. um, but how'd we, they find the site? Like, do you even know? Usually, yeah, Google. Okay. Just Milwaukee InfoSec. Mm -hmm. um, we <clears> did, <throat> I signed us up for meetup.com um, in about October, November, I think. And that's been very successful. We just got our 50th member about an hour ago. Um, yeah. a, a lot of people that a lot of new people that are coming out are coming out due to meetup. So there, there's a lot of people, and I've been looking at the, the members um, who have their other groups exposed on the site. You can see that a lot of them are just going. They're going to other technical meetups, like whether it's developments or prof other professional networking and just other extracurricular type stuff. You know, ki kayaking and camping, beer meetups. Hmm. So you know, a lot, a lot of the things that a lot of us are also interested in. So meetup is definitely. I, I think yeah. a, a, I, and a great I, place to advertise. Yeah, we've, we've been somewhat resistant to it at Burbsec, but I tried it out um, for East because uh, I, uh, I would go to other companies like one-off meetups like Groupon just did an InfoSec night. Uh, and I was talking to other people there saying, hey, have you heard about Burbsec? I can push in the Burbsec. They go, no, what is that? And, and, and I'd explain it and I go, can I ask how you heard about this? And they said, oh, it was on Meetup. Like consistently, I was on Meetup, Meetup or Eventbrite, but usually Meetup. I saw it on Meetup. So... Uh, if you're in an area where people are looking at meetup.com, and I'm sure it varies by city, but it seems you, he's had success in Wisconsin. I had great success in Chicago. As soon as I put Burbsec East on meetup.com, it was an explosion of, of new members. It was, it was. Why just East, man? No, no love for the rest of the. Uh, no, no, because next month. And, next month. Be on, that's hope. another cool thing about the Burbsec <laughs> network is they're all independently run however their members think it should be run. Like actually North, Likes to do presentations, um, even though like officially Burbsec doesn't doesn't do that. But I mean, that's what your people want to do. Go for it. I don't care if you guys want to go on uh, put Prime on Meetup. That's up to you. Yeah. Um, you run that by that's I'm not I'll run it by who? I'll just do it. Yeah, I'm just saying it worked for East. And it's done. That's fine. I don't think. It, yeah. Um, Jacob said he had tried it for West yeah. and met moderate success. So it, it it's free for you know, up to 50 members. So try it out. Like it doesn't hurt. It's it's definitely not going to hurt. I had great success with it. Yeah. Um, on that note, the uh, also the the Madison Information Security Meetup they solely use Meetup.com, and it works out very. Well. I don't know if it's just because they don't they don't do Twitter or anything, but they have a ton of members on there. A lot of interaction when they do have yeah. meetups. The other thing is their meetups are irregular, so they just that's out. yeah. So, so it, people it, kind of I think look for it. Regularity is critical. Absolutely critical. Um, and then I, I, most of, and most of the people I survey say they saw us on Twitter. So. That's all I can say is like Twitter is incredibly successful too. What do you guys do to Wolfgang Gorlick? Well, yeah, just Wolf. <laughs> just Wolf he just talking <laughs> about it and whatever Wolf is doing, I would say that that's probably he, do a survey. Who knows does, Wolf? Does anybody know who he is? <laughs> well, he's probably talking about my site then. Um, so I, I I don't want to say that we just rely on people saying stuff, but he tweets things out. He's got a website. He's got newsletters. He does like. He could probably advertise anything. So you, you have like one famous person one famous who's that. So every, get a famous story. person. And then he'll um, call other people to yeah. fall through and do the same thing. Yeah. Um, Chris and I are pen testers, and so we deal with a lot of, we, we have clients who are effectively contractors. And I'll talk to my clients all the time, say, hey, guys, check out Burbsec. And, I, and I'll tell them, like, hey, I run Burbsec. Hey, come, come hang out, you know. If you guys want, sometimes I can get them to sponsor too. Uh, so don't be afraid to talk to your customers and your clients. Say, hey, why don't you come up to this meetup? If you got a particularly cool one, or like this guy's just really into it. I like this guy. I like his team. Like I really like what they're doing. They they would like to. I think they would like this meetup. Tell them, hey, why don't you come on out? Check it out. Hang out. It's outside of work. We don't have to talk about work. Just talk about hacking, engineering, whatever. Uh, and then from there, just word of mouth gets you going. Um, so let's. Uh, we got a few minutes. Let's uh, do some 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 Q and A. Throw some hands up. N nothing. Cool. Crocs. What do you got? Uh, yeah, once that I can think of. Yeah, we were we were over sponsored. 
I think. Over-sponsored. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of what happened at Prime a few weeks ago with the strip oh, no, club no, incident. No, it, was, it was a couple of years ago at Prime, but it was like one of, one of the first times that we had sponsored and, and a certain company came in and pretty much said, yeah, just, you know, set like a time limit, like for the next like couple hours, I'm buying whatever you guys want to drink. Yeah. And this place had a lot of like... Right, know, and so we were buying the $15 beers. Yeah. You know, the 10.8%, like... The the like no. Chimay White all day. That was the last time yeah. that we did it in that particular fashion. Then we started saying, let's... let's I had fun that night. I didn't think yeah, it was, it was yeah, a problem. It was great. I... <laughs> Thank you, that company that I'm not naming for various reasons. Yeah. But uh, um, that wasn't the best move overall. But yeah. yeah, generally, if you maintain some level of a professional air about the place, people keep themselves in check because they're adults and they're professionals. Uh, every now and then, you're going to get a weird straggler. and But it's rarely been a problem. We have huge groups. Kate has a story, apparently. Not really. Because I was going to say, <laughs> so if that smile. Night like that, I wouldn't have remembered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Invalid question. It it's erroneous. <laughs> <laughs> we. Yeah, so if you don't know who the problem is, it's probably you. And I think, yeah, I, I wouldn't have remembered those nights, but I, I, yeah. I assume it happens. We get we get a rant. We just got a rando at Prime who just got like super trashed and went like full on like let's all go to the strip club, guys, like that guy. But it was just that one guy, and yeah, there might be someone already at the bar who's already been there drinking and then sees a whole bunch of people and like oh they're getting free drinks. I'm gonna go hang out with that group. And yeah, and he's like oh well, yeah, I'm yeah. new sweatpants guy. But you followed into the strip club then, right? Yeah, and I don't think we have time for that story, but it's excellent. <laughs> and I'll tell that some other time. That was me and Aaron and Pancakes. That was a good time. <laughs> um, sweatpants guy. I'm going to tell the sweatpants guy story. It's real quick, and it's and I think it's critical to you guys who are starting out, and then you can tell us about it. We got an actual question, though. So oh, well, thank you. I feel like it's probably related. Yeah. So. Go. Um, uh, that's... That's up to you to uh, to take in the situation and react properly. Um, it, sometimes it might be best to have the if you're in a bar, have the bar staff deal with it. Uh, that's one of one of the benefits of being in a public place is you can go, hey, this guy's back here and he's harassing everybody. He's he's groping women. He's way too drunk. Can you guys deal with him? And the the bar staff is very equipped to deal with situations like that. Um, if he's just an undesirable individual, he's just being mean to people, nobody likes him, um, that is taken care of often by itself because people just stop talking to him. But if he's being aggressive about it and aggressively offensive, um, if you're in a public place, you can generally get the staff to handle that. Um, depending on how bad it is, you might have to get the police involved, which is terrible. Um, Kate, like, what do you do? Like, I say, I'm a director of customer service. Yeah. I mean, what do you call building security? Like... <laughs> I would say what, at least my angle for a lot of that is to get to know all of these people. They may be a giant asshole. They may be a terrible person. But you kind of need to get to know them and figure out why they're like that. And I take that angle and just figure out what's going wrong here that we can kind of direct it into something more productive. And you have to get to know the people that are showing up really well if you want to be able to deter them from being that guy. Yeah, and uh, like I as the person who... Uh, talks to everybody like I would probably try and address the situation myself where it's like go to talk to that guy oh, let's pull it pull it, pull, it, pull it back a little or maybe I, I throw myself in the line of fire a lot well I will at least make myself the focus of whatever the problem was and then hang out in the corner and let the guy yell at me for two hours which I don't like <laughs> at all and it's probably the worst but that's what I do um, so it's it's if you know the guy and you have like a rapport with them when you speak to them and actually say hey you're getting out of hand mm -hmm. they'll actually respect that more than if yeah. you're just a rando telling a rando to stop whatever they're doing. Yeah, great reason to like get you, get to know your members because yeah. Yeah. it's a social situation and uh, maybe surprising not everyone in, in information security or IT is, is socially adept. <laughs> Gets to be an issue. Yeah. So if for you, sure. You know, if, you're, if you're willing, if you're there to talk with people and you're there to interact and someone is you know, just annoyingly annoying in some way, you know, a little bit of confrontation, we'll just be like, frankly, like, hey, I, I understand what you're saying. We're just having a good time. Nobody cares. Yeah, it's the same thing you would do if it, you were out with a bunch of your friends and one of them got too drunk. You, however you would deal with that. And so, yeah, just try to know who's there. If it's some rando and it's his first time and you got way too drunk, do what you got to do. I also say... Just like, don't escalate the situation. 
it's okay. I, I don't know a lot of people, like, if they're offended or something gets out of hand, it's kind of also, it's okay to be offended sometimes. So it, you kind of also don't want to, like, overprotect people from other people. I don't know how to best say that, but... No, that's I mean, good. It's okay to be offended sometimes. So if you're just like gonna have a little pout fest over here, that's that's okay. You don't necessarily have to like kick out whomever just offended people. You know, you just gotta work through this. Oh yeah, address the situation. On, then it re- on what it is. Yeah. Right? Oh, people get in arguments all the time. Shouldn't heated arguments, and they're fun. I think you're wrong about that. <laughs> security? Is this security? Can we? Yeah, that's drunk. Drink. <laughs> drink here. What have you got? Wow, what is that? Is security? <laughs> that is. <laughs> it's fine. Move um, on. It's evaporated really quick. Yeah, that's. Weird how that I wanna. I'm gonna tell the, the sweatpants guy story because it, it it's something we don't we didn't touch on that I think is really important. To everyone in here is trying to start a meetup. Um, it's gonna be slow going at first. And I think that's why what makes a lot of people stop is they go, nobody's coming. It's been two months. This is stupid. I'm going to stop doing this. Um, when we first started Burbsec West, uh, our guy Jacob uh, said, hey, Prime's a little far for me to go to. There's a huge tech sector out here. A lot of higher income folks and, and thus IT pros live in the area I'm in. I'm going to try starting up something closer to here. So he starts it up and he throws the Twitter out there and he got the other burb sex support so like they're retweeting it to people who follow them on twitter and they go oh cool that's closer to my house hopefully i'll go there uh, and so anyway like the first day the first month he does it he's there for a while and nobody shows up about an hour in like some dude in sweatpants shows up like sweatpants and a t-shirt and like some ratty sneakers and uh, specifically wrong with sweatpants. Well, it's like a nicer and not like a oh super i'm sorry nice yeah it's it's definitely a venue where like you wouldn't wear sweatpants too it's, that would be the exact reason why I would. Also, right, and I'm like, I'm a big, like... I've seen you wear a pimp costume there. Yeah, so. full on. Yeah. It's formal. Yeah, and let's not I call it a so. costume. It's a lifestyle. Uh, yeah, that's a... That's my heritage, and I'm offended. Like Just because we have cultural differences doesn't make you better than me. It kind of does. I'm sorry. My apologies to all the pimps in the house. Show hands, pimps. <laughs> <laughs> like, let the record show like five people here. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm gonna start naming names. I know three of you. Um, and and yeah, and he looked like he probably hadn't bathed in a while. And he showed up, and and so Jacob's trying to talk to him, like get him interested. And like the guy doesn't work in infosec, and uh, uh, I think like just didn't have wasn't like working well with this situation like we couldn't figure out this guy's deal was and it just wasn't happening and he was weird and he was just off and he stayed for a while uh, and then he just left and then jacob was there all by himself again but the guy like was there for the meetup and had heard about it and then just was weird and then jacob's by himself and then he went home and uh he decided the next month to do it again and I, <laughs> I had a bad experience, and like one dude and one weirdo in sweatpants showed up, but I'm like, I, I'm going to do it again. And the next month, eight people showed up. Just, and who'd heard it through word of mouth, and that was the first night I had showed up. And I thought he had been going on for like a year. This is, I was just getting involved in Burb Sack, and I was like, oh, cool, a whole nother group of people. Neat. And so, you know, and a lot of them was their first time, and it turned out because it was everyone's first time. Uh, and sweatpants guy never showed up again, ever. We've never heard from him since. <laughs> But he told eight people, right? And so, like, the moral is there: like, don't shun sweatpants guy. He's apparently got friends. All he did was shower and put pants on. He's yeah, right. He's, he's, yeah, it's it's Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> There's a sweatpants guy inside of all of us. There is. I'm just like my thing is like if you're going outside, like change out of your pajamas. That's. <laughs> Like I'm, I, I have certain fashion standards and I will fight you. It's like, did you not know you were going outside today? Did you wake up and you were already outside and you're like, well, guess I'll go to the meetup. Put, put some real clothes on. It's outside of the bounds of this panel. Okay. Um, all right. Um, one, 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 no, 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 okay. Okay. Sorry. We're done. All right. Thanks. Thank you guys for coming out. I hope this, this was helpful. Uh, we will be at the after party. So if you guys want to hit us up with, with specific questions about your meetup, we'll, we'll totally tell you how to run it properly because we're right and we have the best ideas. So. And we're pimps. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, some contact info. Thank you guys. Thanks for coming to B-Sides Nashville and stay tuned.